I've seen a few videos on YouTube showing these sort of police lights like I've got here and they driven by a couple of 555s but nobody seemed to explain how the circuit worked so I'll put one together myself and let's go through it. Right, the first thing to look at is what this 555 is doing, and that's the strobing effect. Ignore the switching from one lot to the other for the time being. So if I disconnect this 555 now, you can see it all stops. And if I put a current limiting resistor there to ground like that, and that's the, this is the same, the same value as this resistor I have here, and then connect. And then you can see just the red LEDs are strobing away. The blue LEDs are doing nothing. And just to give you a hint, if I connect this resistor to the positive rail, then the blue LEDs flash instead. So let's have a look at this circuit. It's an A-stable circuit, but it's slightly different to the A-stable circuit I showed in my previous video. It's a much simpler arrangement for this kind of just blinking light purposes. Okay, let's have a quick look. So this is the standard A-stable circuit arrangement given in the 555 data sheets. And I went through this in my previous video, this one here. I'll leave a link in the description below. If you're not familiar with this circuit uh, or the internal workings of 555, then I really recommend you take a look at that first. But th in this standard circuit, then this capacitor charges from your supply rail through these two resistors and charges the capacitor. And when you discharge, it discharges through this route, through this one resistor and through this discharge pin. Now this much simpler arrangement doesn't use the discharge pin. It actually uses the output because remember the output can both drive and sync current. So it actually charges the capacitor through the output, through this resistor, charges that plate on that capacitor. And then when the output goes low, then it actually discharges through the output as well. Might seem a bit odd, but it works perfectly fine. Now, the downside of this arrangement is that your load will affect the duty cycle and the frequency. So you can't get anything really accurate here. If it's a fixed load, then you can work it out. If it's a changing load, then it will keep varying the frequency and duty cycle. But for a flashing light where you're not too fussed about the exact frequency of it, you just want to get the right effect, then this is absolutely fine. So let's just take a look at how this circuit works then. And as I've had on my previous video, I'll use this voltage scale as I've got on the right hand side here. So red indicating your supply rail, which we had at nine volts and blue, your negative rail or zero volts. And then you got all the gradient in between. This arrow here indicates the charge that would be on this plate here of the capacitor. So it's the same voltage that be all around this leg as well. So because this is zero volts, we start at a zero volt state, but let's assume that this capacitor is discharged. And because that's at zero volts, this comparator, comparator one output will be high. That's because the reference voltage that we're using, one third of nine volts, which is three volts, that is higher than the zero volts coming in on this leg, so therefore the output goes high. Because that's high, the set on the flip-flop gets triggered, therefore its output goes high. But we take the inverted output, this bar Q or not Q, and that therefore is low. That low gets fed into this driver, the driver then inverts it again, so therefore we've got a high output. And because that is high, the capacitor now starts to charge through this resistor and charges that plate. And also it turns our LED on and it goes through that current limiting resistor as well. So over a period of time then this capacitor will charge up and once it gets to three volts or slightly higher, then this comparator will now go, go low. That's because the voltage coming in here now exceeds the reference voltage, our three volts. So the output here goes low. Nothing changes on the output because the flip-flop is in a latch state. But the capacitor continues to charge because the output is still high. So then once we get to six volts or higher, now comparator two turns on. That's because this 6.1 volts, or six volts or just higher than six volts, will be feeding into this threshold pin. So we're now referencing 6.1 volts with six volts. So therefore this is now higher than that. This output therefore goes high and the reset is triggered on the flip-flop. Because it's been reset, the output of the flip-flop goes low we take the inverted output of that, so we get high, goes through the driver again, inverts again, so our output is low. And because that's low, our LED turns off, 
But now the capacitor is now discharging through this resistor through that same output pin. And it'll continue to discharge down to the three volt level and the whole cycle starts again. And it will continue to flip to and fro between the one third and two third voltage levels, turning the output on and off and flashing our LED on and off. Now, if we just shift this over for a second, we can put another LED alongside this one. But you can see this one is reverse bias to this one. It's orientated the other way around. And I've put the current limiting resistor to the positive rail this time. Now, when this output goes low, this LED will come on. When this goes high, that will go off again, and this one will come on, but it will switch between the two. But that's not what we really want. What we are after is this kind of alternating between the blue and the red lights. And when it's on either one of those, then we're getting a strobing effect for a short blast. Then it flicks to the other one, we get a strobe effect of that. So if you haven't worked out already what's going on with this circuit, I think the next slide, it will become obvious. And there you go. Now we've got two 5.5 chips wired in that same simple A-stable arrangement. And you can see the output I'm showing here, we've got a fairly fast frequency on this one compared to this one. This, this resistor and capacitor is giving me a much slower square wave output than this resistor and, and capacitor. So if we move this white bar across, which indicates kind of a timeline across this square wave, then we'll see what happens. So to start out with, they're both low, no LEDs will come on. So just imagine this pulse is going into this side, both these LEDs, and this pulse is going into both these LEDs as well. Forget the current limiting resistor, we will need that, but for the time being, I just want to show what happens with the LED current flowing to and fro. So as the time moves on, this output first goes high. We're still low over this side, so this LED comes on. We've got high here, low here, current will flow through that direction. Can't flow through this LED because it's reverse bias. This, this current can't flow from this high to this low. As it moves on again, it, this now goes high and this has gone low. So this LED comes on. This LED is reverse bias to so this one. The high current through here, sorry, the high voltage here goes across to this low. Then move on again, it goes off and again, goes on and so on and so on until we get to this point here when this goes back to a low state again. And now it's low, it flicks over to this other LED and then it'll go off again because they're both low again. And it'll keep going between there to give us our flashing effect. So now you generally know how this thing works. Let's have a look at the circuit as a whole. And here it is. So that's the first 555 with the faster output. And this is the second 555 with the slower output. And they're both wired in this sort of simpler, A-stable output arrangement. These are the values that I used here. I had a one microfarad capacitor there and over here, actually. But on this side, I had a 40K resistor. And on this side, I had a 700K. So that's why this one was slower. Now, if you don't have these values, don't worry. Just anything like it, if you want to build something like this, if you want to get the same effect, so long as your capacitor and resistor or RC time constant is the same. And I'm going to do a video on RC time constants sometime in the future. So as long as your capacitor multiplied by your resistor is something similar to what I've got, then you'll get the same effect. So here's my one microfarad capacitor times 40K. That comes out as 0 0.004. And on this side, one microfarad times 700K, then that come out as 0.7. And I'll leave you a copy of this circuit diagram for you to download. I'll put a link in the description below. So there you go, bit of fun. With a couple of 555 chips, you can put together a nice fancy police flashing light effect. I hope you found it a bit of fun. And if you found it interesting, then please click the like button. And if you haven't done so already, please click subscribe too. All right, catch you later.